It's preparing. All right. So let's see. All right, it looks like we are live here with Jorge. And I'm just gonna do a quick check. If anyone is there, give us some love, comments, let us know that you are here with us live. We are live. Okay, so that's showing up on Facebook. <laughs> All right, well then I'll just kind of get us started. Jorge, can you still hear me? Very well. Perfect. Well, I will take a moment here. I see some people are joining us. So if anybody wants to give us some comments or some hearts, I am excited to be here live with the amazing Jorge Luis Delgado, a wonderful gentleman I've had the pleasure of touring through Peru with and a wonderful teacher and Chakaluna um, that's here to bring us some wisdom and share with us um, ways of working with energy and some Incan tradition, um, some stuff from the Incan tradition. So Jorge, and you also, by the way, Jorge, I almost forgot, you published a book on Machu Picchu this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of, of a, perfect. Of a, so Jorge, I'm going to be quiet for a moment and say, say hello, introduce yourself, um, and tell us a little bit about you. Oh, thank you very much. A, a great honor to be in your audience with your presence and all these beautiful open heart people that connect with you. I think the service you do to the humanity, it's just amazing how you start to connect with all those souls that they know that they have to play an important role in this new cycle. So for me, it's always a great honor to share from the wisdom of the ancestors, when the wisdom of the mother earth, the father son, you know, for, a, for our culture, that is the culture of the light, all is that light. And, uh, you know, most of the time we believe it's about this specific culture, pre-Inca, this is Inca, whatever. But in reality, what we are doing is really connecting with the, the oneness of that light. And that light expressed in this reality in what we call life. Mm -hmm. So there is only one life. And as we connect with all those souls, they are awakening, remembering we are one life. And each other, we bring a contribution, like ourselves, knowing the specific functions, specific missions, but there is one common, common job, common service, common mission. It is about life. It is about how we become an important factor for evolution of life that comes from the light. So, I'm so grateful uh, uh, to be with you and with this beautiful circle. I, I come from Lake Titicaca. You know, that's for us the birthplace of the children of the sun, but the birthplace of the children of the sun nowadays is all over the world. You know, this is the time where everywhere are birthing the new golden children, the, the children of the light, the children of the sun. So we, at the Lake Titicaca, we have many cultures like the Aymara, the Pukina, Aymara, Quechua, but small nations like uh, the Lupacas, Pacajes, Carangas, you know, many pre-Inca cultures. But in general, all of us, we can say we are the children of the sun. Mm -hmm. And that we have uh, great places in Peru where we have, you know, nowadays many people is interested in gymnasium to exercise the physical body. Those power places, we start, <laughs> I start to use this metaphor, the, the gymnasium for the soul. You know, this is the time when we need to do the calisthenics for the spirit. You know, because 
we've been training our mind, our physical body, but this is the time when we start to train in our souls, our spirits. And we have amazing modalities to see if we are really building good muscles in our <laughs> soul, you know? to be strong and to have a strong immune system to elevate our frequencies. Oh, and, and I love that, Jorge. Um, you're talking about such, in, such an important time in this world right now, I think, and with so many people who have gone through a year or more of feeling disconnected raising our energy, raising our vibes and clearing our energy, I think is more important now than ever. And before we started, we were talking about sharing a little bit about maybe from your tradition, what are some things that people can do in a simple way to clear their energy, raise their vibes and release? I like how you use the word heavy energy um, because I don't believe in negative or positive. I think the word heavy is a good term because it feels like it's a, a bit more of a weight versus like negative or positive. But how might we release some of this heavy energy that we're all feeling after such a long journey of separation and, we can, and now that we're reconnecting? Very important question because more and more people is coming with that question how to release the heavy energies and how, uh, for a moment, for example, some very quick medicine, you know, like a pill for the moment. Uh, of course, it is about to be in the moment. When some thoughts from the past come strongly, just come to the moment where you are. Observe your breath mm -hmm. and you start to see where is your mind. Where is your attention? As we observe our attention, the awareness of life becomes stronger. As we are aware we are life, we have everything we need. So there is no worries about the future. And as we are aware we are life, and we see that light comes from the light, then we are aware we don't need to carry all those heavy energies from the past. <laughs> energy, heavy energies, any of the experiences mm. of energies, dense energies from the past that doesn't come from love. If it doesn't come from love, of course, probably started with fear. Then came anger, resentment, you know, this uh, uncomfort frequency in our bodies that we have the tendency to be attached to. And sometimes we reflect it in with other good excuses. I mean, good uh, in, in a way, <laughs> but uh, this is not the, the always we can see in our world, good excuses to be unhappy. Say, so, wh why, you know, because we need sometimes this kind of energies to feed a heavy energy body. But if we don't, feed too much the heavy energy body doesn't grow and if we can stop feeding it how we do it facing the refined energy facing the heavy energies releasing forgiving letting go gives us more opportunities to face to enjoy the refined energies that is in this reality in a big wave but sometimes we are too busy paying attention only the heavy energies. Life is proportional. As we have a great gift, there is a weakness. But the tendency is to be focused only in the weakness. It's important, the weakness to domesticate, to heal, to transform. But always we can enjoy the present, the gift that brings life. I love Jorge how simple your teachings are. <laughs> it is, and it's amazing how it is all about. I love you're always teaching about love, service, and wisdom, being in the light. And whenever you speak, I know that sometimes I feel blessed to actually learn from you so much. But you constantly remind us of those three tenets, love, service, and wisdom. And every time I hear it, it reminds me of how beautifully easy it is to be remembering that we're of love, 
that were of light and that, you know, being of service. So I'm so grateful that, you know, even acknowledging that it's okay sometimes to be stuck in that heaviness. It's not a bad thing. It's a place of learning. Um, and then just remember, right, that you are love, that you are light and that energy begins to lighten around us. One thing though, I would love to talk about, and by the way, we've got some lovely folks who are here. I see your hearts and I wanna say, we, we're here, we're loving you, Jorge. And if anybody has a question for Jorge that you wanna put in the comment um, as he's speaking, I will definitely <clears throat> be happy to share and ask him that. But one thing I'd like to talk about with this is in such a, a, um, a time of, of reconnection, um, any kind of guidance from people who I think are struggling to reconnect? If it, I think I might ask it that simple for Hey. I mean, you and I were having a little conversation just before about, I thought you said something brilliant. We're kind of through the pandemic, now we're learning to live in a new way. Um, and before actually you and I had a conversation, which I love about really, what does it mean to be in this new life? I think back in 2020, you said to me, it was like year zero. And now we're kind of in year one <laughs> and, and we're, we're stepping out of the womb. We're reconnecting anything for folks to gently open up their heart and, and allow themselves to, to be connected again in a time where sometimes I think we're nervous to do that. I hope that all made sense. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yes, uh, of course, everything makes sense, you know, when we have a question and when we need a little bit of more clarity. Mm -hmm. uh, for us, as you said before, it's very simple. What is your most important contribution in this new day? Mm. It's just to love yourself. But the question is, are you really loving yourself? What is your awareness of love? One of the most important commands in many traditions is about love. Love something, somebody, some masters, love God, love, love, love. But if you don't know about love, how come you will love? And how you know really that exists that sublime energy, that incredible energy is just by feeling. Only you can rediscover that light. Because always we say, of course, we are children of the light. I am children of love. But how you, you embody that? By loving ourselves, by accepting the wisdom that is in us, by being aware that we are in service to light because there is no love that's not in service so how do you know that you are that love and you are expanding because the mind brings many lies you know the, the, the mind will tell you uh, you are a master in love you know look how many books you've been reading how many workshops you had how many teachers you met in your world. <laughs> so of course you, you are very clear. You know very much about love. Mm -hmm. In our tradition, we believe that we are expanding, we are growing spiritually when we are in harmony with our seven relations, the basic seven relations. Also we call the seven harmonies. How is your love, service and wisdom? With the mother earth, mm -hmm. with the father son. The third with the blood family. The fourth with the neighbors. The fifth with your past. Do you love your past? No. If you don't love your past, you keep releasing, keep in your job of letting go until you love your past. If you clarify the past, you clarify your future because you will not attract any more the same kind of energies. The seventh relation is with yourself. How is your love? How is your wisdom? How is your awareness of being in service to light, to life? Everybody is a contribution of love. In this world, every creature of the Mother Earth and the Father Son, we are like the love kisses from Pachamama and Pachatata. <laughs> 
And I think the, sometimes I think there's so many different ways to move through these different steps, but you know, what you've just brought forward for us is complete awareness on all levels from what, how we're relating with our relations to how we relate with ourselves to our past. Um, I know that for many here, and we're getting a lot of love from people who are just loving your message. So I want to thank you, I, I, Jorge. We're not done, but I just want to take a moment. If you are loving Jorge's amazing energy and wisdom, by the way, He's going to be here in the Massachusetts area next week, Jorge, you're back. <laughs> yes, so so excited to return, you know, I, I found amazing opening, you know, it's interesting how we have connection with the people and there is something that makes stronger that relationship and I think you open it. Uh, remember when you, we talked a long time ago in Peru, you know, You've been vibrating with the children of the sun energy and you say, oh, you should come. So then I went there and now we continue. You know, it's, it's just fascinating how life opens the doorways to reconnect. Probably we've been in the circle before and um, we will be Absolutely. And so for those of you who are here in New England, I want to get this out for those who are listening. And we have a couple more questions here for you. By the way, we're just getting a lot of love <laughs> in the comments. So for those of you who are watching, and again, if you have a question for Jorge, let us know. I would love to, uh, he would love to share more wisdom, but he's going to be here next week. It's hard to believe we're in the middle of September, Jorge. This year is going by so fast. What is time anymore? Are we right? Is time just non-existent? Um, you're going to be doing some private um, healing sessions, um, which are incredible. And uh, through, I think you're here early next week around Tuesday or Wednesday at Circles of Wisdom in Methuen, Math. Massachusetts. I can't talk today. Um, but even more next weekend, you're going to be doing several workshops. So people can dive deeper into a lot of the teachings that you're just kind of scratching the surface of today. So one of them is going to be on the 24th from chaos to harmony. You're talking, you're going to do a whole day workshop on raising your vibes with ink and practices. I'm so excited. Um, you're going to, you're going to talk even more about releasing these heavy energies, um, releasing Hucha, hucha, am I saying that hucha. right? Hucha. <laughs> um, and you're also for that, <laughs> right? <laughs> and for those who actually want to learn more about healing and working, I actually have a pair of the chumpy stones. Um, and uh, you're going to teach folks how to actually work with the stones and do healing energy. So tell us a little bit, if you don't mind, for anybody who would, you know, want to dive deeper. I've got people going, yes, by the way, in the comments. I can't wait to meet you. Um, tell us a little bit about your healing work and, and maybe what people might experience either through the workshops or classes. I mean, your wisdom, I could just, I listen to you talk for hours and it's amazing. But um, if anybody's curious about a healing session, how, what, what, what might they expect with you if they come to connect with you? Well, always say, we say with no expectation, but with deep intent. You know, intent is when we believe in the possibilities, not in the probabilities. Probability is more rational, goes according with the statistic about the science. It says this or that, this is going to be probable or not probable. But when we surrender to the light of the divine mother, divine father, everything is possible. So the desire of the heart, we play together, moving the heavy energies from the past, but it has to be your wish of the heart, that desire of the transformation. So we guide you in ways how to pull out our, the histories that there are dense, the histories that doesn't come from love. Those are the blockages that doesn't let us be who we are. As much we move those energies, we have a much, much clearer awareness of our real self. Because most of the time when we see our faces in the mirror, we see the one that we think we are, but in reality, we are seeing the past. Mm -hmm. We are seeing the point of view that comes from the experiences of things, energies from the past. 
and most of the times we the ask we create to survive. But the most important for us, it is the service to remember each other, the powerful, the incredible children of the light that we are. So this is not only, you know, what we can say a healing, but the beginning of the new spiral is a way to reprogram our presence in this world. It is so important now, each of us, we start to remember each other. We are not here to awake anybody. Each person awakes and takes the best we can to elevate our frequencies, to be more immune to different heavy energies. But the most important is how we bring our own light to illuminate the new day. And it seems this is one at a time. Yes. Oh my God, Jorge, I just have to say a big thank you to that statement. I'm gonna repeat one thing that you just said that I think is mind blowing is that we can't awaken anyone else but ourselves. And I think that's a major struggle I see here in, in some of the people like, oh, I've got like this incredible new view of the world. I want you to see this new view of the world. And sometimes I think we see a lot of people who become frustrated when they've, they've awakened and they're like, oh, come see this my way. And you have folks who are like, I'm not ready for that yet. And it can hinder the awakened soul. It can hold back the journey of those of us who now see and what I've learned, and I think I, I just want to repeat this because so many people need to hear this right now is we can only focus on our own awakening journey. And I think Jorge, you'll probably even agree. And if you want to add something to, thing to this, something I've learned in 20 years of doing this work, it's a, it's a constant step. I feel like every so often I'm like seeing things more clearly or, oh my God, I see it even more clearly that we're constantly shifting that consciousness. We're constantly raising that energy. So what I've learned is the more that I focus on my own growth, the more people follow in when they're ready. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. You know, uh, life naturally brings us many opportunities to awake, to grow, to expand. But the main job is really about to pull out all this resistance mm -hmm. that's made by the heavy energies from the past. So no hucha is our law, we say. You know, hucha is all the energies that doesn't come from love, that the humans, we have the tendency to be attached. But at the same time, it's important to remember our luminous body, to remember our gifts, talents, and important contribution for the new day. I think what you brought in these 20 years, you've been sharing, and because you've been sharing, it, it expands more and you have a better, bigger picture. So nowadays, everyone, we have this opportunity to have the big picture, but not only by getting information, it is really about moving energies. It is about pulling out the heavy energies. As much we pull out the heavy energies, then naturally that light shines in our lives as love that is in service and wise. I mean, everybody is wise person. Mm. Everybody is born with baskets of wisdom. The thing is that in our mind, we don't want to accept that. So in reality, we are not learning. We are not teaching anything except we are remembering each other. The Kapahkuna cycle. Remember the first Inca in our culture and the Inca culture was Malku Kapak. Kapak is power. And what's power? Power is light. That light is love, that's in service and it's wise. So this is the return of the Kapakuna people. So this is the cycle when not only one Inca, but every Inca, every children of the sun, every children of the light is remembering that we have incredible power 
That is the power of Iliatixi, the power of the primordial light. The first light comes from the source that is in each of us. And the power of it is incredible. It's incredible for the mind, but in our heart, we know that everything is possible. So this is the time of the Kapakunas, the return of the light. But that light as divine and sacred, everybody, we are returning to that sacredness of life. I love it. Oh my God. So I have a question. Uh, some folks are posting some questions for Hey, but this one, I, it just kind of hit me. I, I feel like I know the answer, but I would love to hear your perspective. Um, you know, we're seeing a lot of division in this world. We're seeing a lot of struggle in this world. People are on opposite sides politically in, in just so many ways. Um, so here's a wonderful question from Amanda. Um, how can we switch, you know, um, how can we, uh, I want to, I'll read it exactly as she's saying it. How can we embrace the current divide and not hold judgment toward those we label as selfish? How can we switch to a lens of love? Now, I know the answer is simple, but I'd love yeah. to, <laughs> go ahead, Jorge. <laughs> you know, in, in, in our society, of the, of the mind, in the society of the rational world, always the tendency is with the negative thoughts. You know, remember the Hartmut Institute some years ago, they found that 90% of the human thoughts are negative. Mm -hmm. So always we can have a good excuse from, from, from to be unhappy. But the groups that manipulate, you know, our, our humanness, they use that aspect that we are easy to be manipulated by fear and they create enemies. The one who doesn't think like you is your enemy. So the politicians, many other groups will always find, you know, ways to divide. As they divide, they have a little power based on that fear. So everybody knows that if we are in our heart, fear disappear. To be in the heart is really to be in the center. If you are in the center, you have 360 degrees to see with clarity what's going on. And you don't need to really have a clue. As much you have, your presence in your heart, you know, you feel and you act in life based in that energy. So it is not really time to argue which is better this way, the other way, you know, people, after all people, you know, for example, the case of the vaccine, some people say it's not good, some people say it's good. But if we see in all the cases is about fear, fear to get something too toxic in the body, fear to don't have it. You know, people in South America is fighting to get a vaccine. In some places, people, we know too much, you know, we say, okay, no, 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 that's not good. But if you accept something, you say, you know, my cells are light. That light is love, it's in service and it's wise. So the cells know the function. So it has a natural protection the immune system. But if I have the vaccine, okay, I was telling to my friends, you know, well, I will take the vaccine of the immortality. You know, what, what does it mean? You know, I, it's the way how I talk with myself, the way I convince myself that we will have some additional help and we will process properly and the wisdom of the cells that is light. There is nothing more powerful than that light that comes from our heart, where the divine mother, divine father presence is always there. It was there and it will be there. So as we feel that through our veins, We may have a little pause here with Jorge. Let's just see, Jorge, can you hear me? 
Hang in okay. There. Oh, there you are. You're back. Okay. okay. <laughs> we just had a little well, pause. <laughs> I, I was in that in our in our veins where it's flowing love, service, and wisdom. So it is all about to trust. To trust in the light, the children of the sun, of course, in the mind, always we can have some doubt, but as much we are in the present moment and we can feel our pulse and it's pulsing light. Mm -hmm. So we are pulsing life and that life comes from the light. So the best we can say in these moments in the world just to be in the heart. That was the primordial message from the very beginning in this wave, in the biggest wave, the first wave, and it will continue until we really get it. Until we really understand if we are in love, fear disappear. Mm, it's true. And it's a practice. I think it's so important for people to know that practicing being in your heart is, is a journey. It's a practice. The more you do it, the easier it gets. It's like working a muscle. Um, but when you live in a state of fear for so long and you, that's the way you've lived your life, it's going to take a little bit to flip that switch for some of you. But I, Jorge, I think this is so brilliant. One thing I have to say here from somebody, and I'm much, I I want to quote the woman who said it. So forgive me if I can't find your name, um, but I love this, what they said. You should hear this. Um, oh, Karen, Karen Smith, you blow her heart open. <laughs> and I feel like that every time we talk to you, it's like a heart, like, oh my God, just a beautiful opening. So I just love how she said that uh, you blow my, my heart open and I feel the same way. Um, one thing I want to do here really quickly, um, while we still have you, Jorge, you're a wonderful instrument of the divine source, 100%, I agree. Um, uh, Jorge, you and I are going to be journeying again to Peru. Yay, I'm so excited for those who are listening. Yeah. Um, you have the opportunity to come to Peru with me and, and work with Jorge. We're going to be there in April of next year, which is going to blink. It's going to be here before we know it. Um, there's something I want you to take us to Peru for a moment. I'm going to try to share my screen and hopefully this will translate on the live. But tell us about these wonderful um, crop circles um, that we were looking at. Let me see if I can do this. So hopefully everybody hang in there. I hope not to lose you all. Um, let's see if I can get this to share. And um, there we go. So hopefully everybody can start to see that. Tell us a little bit about this. Well, Beautiful. as you can see, this is one of the oldest crop circles in the world. And as we can see the four directions, uh, the three concentric circles of love, service and wisdom and it has many rays and it continue the circles around the circles. But this one was rebuilt. You know, most of the circles we see in the high plateau by Lake Titicaca, those had been built in the pre-Inca time in the period of Pucara, Tiwanaku, but it had been rebuilt those like a 20 years to 30 years ago. You know, when we had too many floods, you know, too much water and sometimes we had some droughts. What is important that just a few weeks ago, we took some uh, psychics and some channels, you know, to try to find the answer because, you know, this is, the picture is took by a drum, but when we, we are in the same place, you don't see clearly, but you can feel the energy as you walk the circles. So what we found in the, the information we got in this opportunity was that the same beings who are designing the crop circles in Europe, they are the ones who decide in the old times in Peru, in different places where we had the most amazing cultures that like at Tiwanaku and Pucara, where we have extraordinary designs, iconography and the stonework that still now we don't know how we can make it you know, just using the hands or very simple uh, technology. But what is interesting is the energy. Those circles, every circle is sacred. It's, we call muyo, it's divine, it's e eternal. But each of these circles are like a portals where we invite the light beings, the masters to come with us. 
and to do healings, to do different kind of practices with the light. So the crop circles is something very new for the pilgrims. Many people went to Peru, to Lake Titicaca, Machu Picchu, but uh, probably they haven't seen those places that we will have the privilege to do it in April. We are going to visit those uh, circles, but not just as a figure, but as a portal to connect with the ancestors, with the masters of the light, that always they come and assist us. Why do I believe that the masters will come? Because everything that comes from the light, that it's love, love is always in service. So always they come when we call from the heart. I love this. I'm just realizing um, that these were the circles that we got to see the last time I was there. <laughs> and I've been in one in England and many, many years ago in one of the you know different kind of crop circles. It's amazing to see them from the drone perspective because when yeah. you're on the ground and you're in it, you're kind of, you, you don't understand the amazing majesty of some of these you know, symbols and forms. So I just love seeing that from the higher perspective. <laughs> Yes, well, but with the, with the ceremonies, we can feel, we can open, you know, yes. that is the, the, the most important experience that we can have in those places. I always feel like for me, having been in, in these crop circles and the one in England, it's almost like a stamp, uh, like a, a light stamp that comes down and imparts like an energy into a specific, you know, part of the world, which I think to me goes into the energy grid or to the earth mother, but I always feel like it's a little stamp. Hi, we're here. <laughs> yeah, you know, besides that, uh, sometimes we have the perspective to see it only in 3D and all those are multidimensional. And uh, as we awake as a multidimensional beings, we have the awareness much more open to reconnect with that essence, with the cosmos, with the upper world, with the inner world, with, the, with all expressions of life that some are not visible to the physical eye. I love it. Oh, Jorge, I love spending time with you. For those, a lot of folks are asking on how to connect with you. You're very active here on your Facebook. So Jorge Luis Delgado, people can follow you on Facebook and, and learn more about your teachings. Yes? Yes, yes. We are in Facebook. Uh, a little bit in, I think, Instagram. But, <laughs> but I'm starting to see more. <laughs> <laughs> and I love, I tell people go follow, go follow Jorge on Facebook because he's always posting also incredible images of different light frequencies and shifts that are happening in and around Peru and your travels in Peru, which I just love to follow. And you also pop up and share some of your little teachings and wisdoms as well. So for anybody who wants to just know more about Jorge, where he is, again, he'll be here in Massachusetts next week, um, the week of September. We're going to be here for the Equinox, actually, Jorge. Hey, um, so the week of September 22nd, you'll be here with us in Massachusetts. So you can go to circlesofwisdom.com to learn more about Jorge's um, private sessions and classes next week. Come, come check us out. I'll be around as well. Um, if you want to know more about Peru in April, you can email me, mediumlaurenrainbow at gmail.com. We're in the middle of getting the new dates up. So they'll be up any day this week. But if you want first notice, um, just email me at mediumlaurenrainbow at gmail.com. It'll be April 13th to the 23rd. We're going to be going to Machu Picchu, which you've also written a new book about. Jorge, by the way, has published now three books. Um, I wish I had my copies here right in front of me. I should have pulled them out, but Inca Wisdom, I know, is, is your first book, I believe. That's, uh, the first book is Andean Awakening. Andean Awakening, yes. Second, it's Inca Wisdom, Return to Joy. And the last one that is also in Amazon is Machu Picchu, the city of the children of the sun. And that one just came out. So I need yeah. to get my copy when you're here. <laughs> yeah. And so you can catch all of this, uh, all of Jorge's books on amazon.com. Um, if you want to learn more and your teachings, a lot of your teachings, Jorge, are also in this book. You, you, you talk a lot about love, service, wisdom, as well as a lot of Incan tradition. So I always tell people, check out your books, um, especially if you're traveling to Peru. I think they give you a great foundation. Um, we'll see you next week. 
week. And for those of you who want to join us in April, we're going to go to Machu Picchu. We'll be in Lake Titicaca area, which are my two favorite places. We're going to go see some amazing sacred sites. My favorite is the doorway, as you know. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and heading to the crop circles and all we'll be out on Lake Titicaca. Um, we're going to, and by the way, I, I love to say this, you have, Jorge also is, you know, an amazing teacher, but he guides us through and brings these teachings in the moment. You've got some gorgeous places that we stay at. So we're well taken care of when we're in your arms. <laughs> oh my God. So Jorge, um, I'm going to let you go for now, but I want to say thank you for joining us here today. Everybody um, is sending a lot of love and thanking you for the, the energy. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing you next week. <laughs> yes, I hope to see you and everybody's invited to these gatherings. The, the workshop is going to be extraordinary. Every time, you know, flows in a beautiful ways and we can always learn some people says i already know about it but uh, it is interesting that always something something extra comes you know it's never and the same <laughs> in the sessions you know we use the tectites this energy of the stars and the mother earth to move to remove to pull out the histories the energies that doesn't belong to us so I wish you a great uh, time and uh, to Pananchi's Kama. Puchinata's Kama, yay! We'll see you next week, Jorge. We're all okay. sending you love and a lot of gratitude. We're getting so much love here for you. So I think we'll have some folks connecting with us next week. <laughs> yes, fantastic. Awesome. Take care, Thank Jorge. you very we'll much. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you very much.